Hi, I'm Julian Hopkins. I'm a lecturer in communication at the School of Arts and Social Science in Malaysia. And I'm just uh, making this video just uh, to explain a bit about how I use the workshop module. So what is the workshop module? It's an assignment you can use on Moodle. You set it up like you do other assignments and other plugins. And what happens is students will be able to enter their own assignment, like a submission. You can ask them to write a few hundred words about something. And then after they've done that, they submit it. In the next phase of the assignment, they will receive other students' uh, work for them to, to grade. I hope by the end of this video, you should be able to know how to find and set up a workshop Moodle exercise. Uh, understand some of the advantages and disadvantages of this, advantages of it, and know where to find more information. I started using this because I did a, um, a MOOC on Coursera and what they did there is in, because to deal with a large volume is you would have to write like a few hundred words about something and then what, you, what happens is with an anonymous peer review exercises you submit your, your own work and then you have to grade other students and by doing so I realized they learn a lot about what other people say and I thought this would be really useful to use in my own class, especially in a master's where there's a bit more uh, autonomy from the students and so on. And, and it's also, I think it helps to mean that when students arrive in class, they have read and prepared some of the material. I uh, linked a, uh, I asked them to read a, an article, a research article or a theoretical discussion and link it to a news item. And their peer learning is important. They learn from what the other students write and from what students write about their own work. And they also, by assessing other students' work and seeing other assessments, they get to have a more, better awareness and more perspective on their own work. And I think this can help them improve their own uh, work in the end of the day. So I use this on, on, a, on a master's class on global digital media. And now I'm just going to show uh, the various steps that I go through to set up the exercise. So first you need to add an activity or resource down here and basically you select workshop and then it adds just like a Turnitin exercise or, or other kinds of things in Moodle. So you put that in there and then when you do uh, open it up, i show you a current uh, one that I used, you'll see this, these are the key phases. This panel here is how you move through the different parts of the workshop exercise and uh, I'm just going to show you a bit what it looks like. So initially you, you set up the workshop description here and you'll recognize this kind of setup page and you need to have instructions to the students what they will see uh, to talk about what's going to happen. This grading, I'm going to talk about it more later, it's one of the more complicated parts but here you can set the weightage for the submission, that's the work they submit, which is assessed by other students, how much weight that's going to have, and how much weight are you going to give for their own assessment. So students can be assessed for their assessment of others. As I say, this one's a bit complicated, but I do use it uh, anyway because I think it has a purpose. In the, you need to give students instructions, so I would say go and read this article, read this newspaper article, and answer some key questions. It's important to have very clear uh, questions here which relate to the criteria which I'll talk about in a moment. Here are the instructions. So the instructions for our assessments here are the instructions that the other students will see when they start their assessment. And availability is important here is where you set up when, how long the submissions phase will be and how long the assessment phase will be. It's very important that if you wanted to um, to switch over automatically you must check this box here. And those are the basic uh, assessment criteria, basic settings you have to set up. And then uh, on the next step is setting up the actual criteria, the assessment form. These are the criteria that the students will see and that they will use. So what I've done here is um, basically I use some clear point system here. So for example, everybody has to do a definition of a key concept. So whether it's clear and accurate is two points, not very accurate, or somewhere is one point or zero points. So students can choose one of those uh, options. And what I did is I have a definition, then I ask about what, what they think of the discussion. Um, 
and I ask uh, and I've said that they all have to quote quote different um, from each of the articles so have they done that or not and finally uh, here there are the um, the different uh, whether it's cited properly or not so each time there should be very clear criteria and this is important because first of all students feel more confident to be able to assess other students and also uh, they also feel that they know how they're being assessed and this I think is really important here I've given a different weight to a higher weight to these um, uh, definition and discussion to the other two more objective kind of um, uh, assessments here after that's been done, the students have done all that, and then you would have to set up, and then what you do there is you would click here on submission phase, and that would move the students, it would open it up to the students to do their own submissions, and you tell them about it, and they would do it. And then following that, you move on to the assessment phase. And this is where I have to talk a bit more about how that assessment is done. You can find out more information yourself on Moodle. There's a workshop quick guide here. I'll provide all these links in, in the video or at the end or underneath or something. And you also have more information here about using the workshop here, the assessment phase and so on. There's also a workshop forum uh, where you can go and get help and you can ask questions. And there's somebody called David Mudrak. I think he's the one who designed the module and he's the best one to answer your questions normally. He usually answers within a couple of days, uh, from my experience. So, nonetheless, however, you'll notice there's quite a lot of questions about the grade for assessment, and that is one of the limitations of this workshop module, um, and I'll explain more about that now. Also, for your information, there is this very handy demonstration site, which you can log into with all aspects, many aspects of Moodle, and just try out many different things. And I'm going to show a bit how it looks in the uh, assessment phase here and uh, also show you a real life example so here we can see a real life example of where students uh, assessed each other and you can see here i have actually adapted some of the grades and the reason for this is the grade for assessment tends to be very high uh, the way the assessment grade is calculated is based on an algorithm which takes an average of all the grades and sees how close each student marked to that average uh, grade and I think this is more suitable for a median uh, for, for an objective um, type of assessment but for qualitative it doesn't always work that well in practice most students will get quite a few quite mostly near the maximum here and the reason for that um, and it's okay I think it works okay for me because it's kind of like a participation grade and motivates them to participate they will do something because they know they're gonna get some grades for it and, uh, and that fits the objective so they get to learn more. So you have to set up, however, the assessment phase. Okay, so when you move to the submission phase, you have to, first, before that, you have to set up the, the um, assess, the allocation. So what you can do is you can set up a random allocation here. So what I do is I set it up to have three students per submission, that's up to you. Save changes. And then also you have to set up the schedule allocation here. So you must check this automatically allocates submissions so it moves automatically between both phases. Currently you can do it because it's not in submission. And then you set up here three and you can remove anything that exists already just to restart it. And you can also have students assessing without submitting anything. And then you do save changes and then that's ready to go. And then um, once you've done that, you can put it in submission phase and it'll be ready for students to access and do the submissions. You set it up properly it would automatically switch to the assessment phase you can see here it's on a timer or you could do it manually if you like and then after that once they've all submitted and they've assessed at the end you will see a page which looks something like this and here i'm using that test site i talked about earlier and you can see each student is getting as getting a certain grade and they've also got an assessment grade here and what i've done here is i would spot check about half depending on the size of the class and uh, just look through and see whether the assessments have done were done correctly or not were done fairly and then at the bottom of the student's uh, submission you can override the grade or you can leave it as it is 
Say, for example, you think that the assessment's been a bit unfair, too harsh, this, the assessors didn't notice something, they got something wrong, you could increase the grade or you could decrease the grade. And why the reason I, I decrease the grade um, could be because the assessors have all given great points when it really doesn't deserve it. Or what I've also done because I don't know any way to change the grade for assessment, but sometimes students do assessment grades which are assessments which are not up to standard, they've, they've been too lax about it, they've missed something important. And then I will write in here, I write an explanation of why I reduced the grade. And that's the way I've managed to, to manage that process of, of, um, of making sure that students take the assessment seriously, because I don't mind that they get a lot of 20, that quarter of the grades for it or something, it's okay, but they do have to take it seriously as well. And that's how uh, that works. And then once you finish that, you can decide on all your grades here. And then you would move it to the closed workshop here. And that would uh, then close the workshop and the students would be able to uh, have um, access to it at the end. So overall, I found this to be a useful exercise. What I've done is you know, I've used it as part of a participation grade in class about 10% for the whole semester. Um, I would assign students six or seven, perhaps, um, of these uh, exercises. And I won't take all of the grades. So the average, maybe I'd say 2% or, or maybe I'll take the best five out of seven or the best four out of six of the grades at the end of the semester, which means that students can make mistakes. They can get it wrong one week or miss it for some reason. It's okay. They won't uh, miss out on, on getting the best grades in there. And so that's what I've done. Uh, you always feel free to email me if you like for more information. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye.